Unmute. Unmute. Ron Huggins. Elliot here. Josh is here. Gotcha. Oh, here. So, All right. um, Sandy, did we get you? Sandy. Okay. Jeremy? I'm right here. Can you gotcha. hear me? Gotcha. Yep. Thank you. Ray? Yep. Right here. Gotcha. Steve, you're on? I think so. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Ron Hawkins. Okay. You're not hearing me. Yeah, we're hearing I can you. hear you. Yeah. I can hear you, Ron. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. How do we turn the volume up? It's that. <laughs> Aaron, we got you there? You're muted, Aaron. How's that? Gotcha. Yep. What's going on? Okay. So uh, this is uh, this is an in fairly informal meeting, and it's just to get us back on track for our regularly scheduled meetings. So uh, I I don't think I need to read the procedures completely. Well, I'll just start by saying that this can be viewed on cable channel 1303 um, or uh, the town of YouTube, uh, town of Camden, YouTube. So um, the agenda, the agenda is basically gonna consist of a, um, a report from Steve to bring us up to date on what's been going on with the Harbor and a report from Jeremy to bring us up to date on what's been going on uh, in uh, planning and development. And then after that, we'll have a discussion of uh, what we wanna see on the next agenda uh, pertaining to our work plan and uh, these reports. So who wants to start first? Steve? Yeah, I can give you uh, an overview for those who, who haven't been spending much time down the harbor or just once in a while, I can try to tell you what it was like, uh, you know, what COVID-19, what that did for us, how it changed the demographics of the boaters um, and affected my, my position in my office. Um, first of all, in the beginning of the season, it looked, it looked pretty gloomy because um, there was very few boats on the mooring, but uh, after, after June 15th, they started popping in and by July it was still a little sparse, but then there was like a wall that got hit. And next thing you know, the harbor was alive again. And um, there was a lot of traffic with residents, and visitors. Um, I told Audra about eight months ago, we got together. She was putting the, the budget together and she, she asked me what I thought the uh, overnight dockage would be percentage wise. And I said to her, that's going to be hard. I said, it's a, it's a moving target, but to be safe, let's say 60%. Um, right now we're at 110%. Last time I checked, we had slightly bigger boats. Uh, instead of having a lot of 40 footers, we had a lot of 55, 60 footers and they were spending not two nights, but they were spending a week. Um, so we were able to get the next bracket up for, for money. So, um, and as far as moorings go, we had more small boats than ever. Small folks, uh, residents buying, purchasing 19, 20 footers, wanting to get out on the water. So it's kind of what I said, you know, early on that folks are gonna use the water and that the bay as an asset to uh, get out and have fun. Um, one of the things, I think the only issue we had was mid season to late season. We had a lot, a plethora of people that were just 
speeding too, too much. The, the speed went up and uh, I got some complaints. And so we had to start cracking down and I actually put my, my, either one of my deputies on kind of patrol, just to hang out there and just tell people, you know, we're not, we're not giving tickets out. And I really don't want it to get to that. But we have to tell a lot of people, hey, this is a, a you know, a federal navigable waterway and it's headway speed only. And um, so we never get anyone mad at us. They're always, they slow down as soon as they see us put our lights on. But we might want to think about next year, some more, another buoy that says five mile per hour or something like that. Um, Steve, uh, yeah. what type of boats are speeding? Are they dinghies or are they big boats? All types. All types. Dang, huh? You know, there's, there's small dinghies um, that get up on a plane right when they get out of the inner harbor and they're just, they're going 20 miles per hour in the federal navigable waterway. Now, personally, they're so nimble, uh, you know, I don't, the fact is the law says you got to go headway speed only. So it's not, it, you're not allowed to do it. But when they get into the mooring fields, and I, I tell people, when you get further away from the, the holy sanctum, the inner harbor, and you're out trying to get your boat, you're out in Truman's Cove, you know, it's up to you how fast you want to go. You're still in charge of your own wake. But, you know, it's, it's almost like consensual, consensual circles. When you get further out, it, it's all right if you want to buzz to get your boat. But again, you're in charge of your own wake. If no one complains, I'm not going to, I'm not gonna, if I see someone way out in Truman's Cove, you know, buzzing around, I'm not going to go tell them to slow down unless someone says they bothered me. But when you get in close and everyone's looking at you, that's when I, me and my department, you know, are getting after people. That's really the only, it's really the only issue we had that was negative. Um, we had no accidents. We had no boats go free. Um, so all in all, it's, it's been a good season, but I can field some questions if, if anyone has any. All right, Steve, how did the day sailor fleet do? Do you know? Well, they obviously had to go at a, you know, a changed rate. They were, I, I don't know the exact numbers, but the, the basically the, they were told how many people they could hold. Um, they looked like they did pretty well. Um, we had, uh, not all of them ran. Uh, the, the Lazy Jack uh, decided not, not to run. But uh, Aaron, Aaron's on, he could give a, maybe a quick uh, synopsis on what, how he felt. Um. I felt we were pretty lucky overall, honestly, but, um, you know, we, all of the bigger boats that took more than six passengers were only allowed to run at about 50% or a little bit over, depending on how big their boat was. So, you know, if you put that one challenge right out there in the front, you can probably understand that we felt pretty lucky we survived the year. I'm happy to answer any individual questions you have about it, but I'm, um, uh, I just think overall, all of us were pretty lucky to, um, you know, have some pretty good weather and we were able to run as consistently as we did considering the circumstances. Yeah, from, from what I could see and from what my department looked at, you guys did a good job at, at making sure everyone had, was paying attention to the rules and staying safe. Um, so yeah, yeah, I was, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, I think we're all probably gonna be pretty happy not to use san hand sanitizer 15 times a day at some point in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Just trying to make it a little lighter. No, 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 N no doubt. I'm getting a little little tired of wearing this, but that's the game right now. Um, yeah. So we're really yeah. thankful you helped us out too. Yeah, um, another note that I do wanna say about this season is we, Reached capacity for uh, dinghies. Um, as far as dinghies, I just changed the subject here, but uh, um, as far as dinghy permit, I, I can check. I don't have that number right now, but from what we saw over at Steamboat Landing, was was literally at maximum. Um, the, the two other spots that we put dinghies where it was packed. So uh, I know that the committee has talked about maybe we should talk about where canoes can go and kayaks should go. And I was always kind of like, well, it hasn't been a problem since, so why talk about it? But I think that looking at this season, um, that merits a couple conversations. The new spot, the new area at Steamboat Landing, which um, I went to the select board last year and said, can we try it? And they said, yeah, 
it was about 10, 10 small boats up. Dave, the, yeah. Steve, you, you said steamboat landing. You're talking about Lake Beach? I'm sorry, yeah, I misspoke, yeah. The, the, the new spot at Lake Beach. There was about 10 small boats there this summer. So uh, that's something we can talk about too, that new area, how we can improve it, because that was just a trial and it seems like it's working well. So now we got to talk about how we can improve it. Steve, did you did you find that um, people were using bigger bigger dinghies this year? It looked it looked to me like we had some pretty big ones at the dinghy dock this summer, and I didn't know if that was something new or. That's been slowly encroaching on us over the years, but this year it did seem to uh, it did seem to peak. Um, and Jimmy and I, my deputy, have been talking about that. He actually, we were talking, and I said, "Well, what can we do about it?" And, and uh, Jimmy Leo, who's been my deputy for you know, 20 years, he's been, I think 25 years he's been deputy. He said that um, a lot of the marinas, if you're over 20 horsepower, you're not considered a dinghy. So we could, we could adopt that same thing. And if you have a, a horsepower, you know, these are like 13 foot whalers that have, you know, 25, 30 horses on them. We could say you're not a dinghy and we could charge whatever we want for them. If they still want that spot, they could, they could pay that. We could try to use a, a, a financial thing or, or talk about another way, but that's one thing we were talking about. Steve, I, uh, over at Steamboat Landing, you talk, I see the 13 foot whaler and I see, which I don't consider to be a dinghy under any definition, but uh, there are also, a, dinghies have gone from traditional boat shapes to square and square. And I just, I don't know how we, sort it out because some of it could be length and width, but it's also the shape. And you get some alignments of boats there where if you happen to be the inside guy, it's like how you you gotta like airlift this boat up over these square blocks that have kind of gotten locked together. And uh, I'm just wondering whether we can have a conversation about both uh, restricting things, but also how to how to just make it work better because I just only know steamboat landing because that's where I keep my sort of normal shaped rowboat at this point. But I, you just take a look at it and say, no, a dock really shouldn't look like that. It just doesn't organize. So I'm hoping we can talk about that at some point. Yeah, I think I think that looking at the newer types of boats and the styles and how how we can it all has to do with maximizing the assets. So if there's easy ways to do that, we should we should that should be a roundtable discussion. You know, just dinghies and dinghy storage, that's one good good topic. Okay, so to stay on point here, um, we will um, add to our agenda for our first regular meeting, a discussion on uh, dinghies, proposals, options. Yeah, we, we, it right. should be like dinghy storage, uh, dinghy, new dinghy limitations, could be how we say it, so that you know, we could look at we could look at what it says right now in the ordinance, and then figure out if we need to change that or add something to it. Uh, so what I would suggest is is like I said, I mean one one of our uh, agenda items for our next meeting will be dinghies. So what I would request is that that all the members review the ordinance and review review how it pertains to dinghies. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, okay, Steve, can you uh, speak to uh, mooring release activity? A mooring release activity was, I would say, normal. You di I didn't see any any difference in, you know, in uh, release activity. Um, so you know, let's say we had twelve people give up moorings. Or is right around there, and I don't have the exact number in front of me, but um, you know, we, the same thing. When, when someone gives up a mooring, I go down the list, and uh, and then reassign it. Okay. Any other uh, harbor activity to report? I want to get back to that. I just wanted to make a comment on speed issue if I could get back to that for a minute. I did notice that uh, increase in speed, but, and I just want to remind everyone.
when the, it's not the headway speed is just in those zones, but everywhere you're supposed to be uh, abiding standard of re reasonable, prudent circumstances. So even even out Anchorage, there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on. People are coming close, close to board vessels, high high rates of speed. It's not just the way to be there. Good point. Good point. Yeah, you're always in charge of your own wake. You're responsible for your for your wake. Okay. You done, Steve? Yeah. Turn it over to Jeremy. There, I'm unmuted now. I was dealing with some other phone calls. Um, yeah, just a brief, this is very brief. Um, we did receive a kind of a pre-application proposal for a new pier um, out at George Sherman's property. Um, that came in a few months ago now and I was working with their engineers to um, make sure that was right. I don't know what happened to that since then. Um, I think their engineers are, are working on that. Um, so that will come before you at some point. It will also go to the planning board as well uh, for planning board approval as well. Um, pretty large pier. Where is um, that located? Um, hold on one second. Let me see if I can find that. Bear with me. Um, and maybe while I'm looking at that, I'll just um, touch base also on um, the Army Corps. Um, I think everyone knows there was talk um, in the town um, engaged the Army Corps and the Army Corps um, was moving forward on, on looking at doing a, um, what it would take to do a breakwater of sorts in, in Camden Harbor to protect the harbor. Um, they are still, that is still on their list of things that they would like to do, the Army Corps. Um, I've met with Adam Burnett over the phone many, many, many times um, over the last couple of years. It's still on their radar. I've reached out to him. Um, prior to COVID, it was our hope to have Army Corps and them come up here to Camden and talk to everyone about it, uh, what the project would be. Um, I reached out to Adam yesterday, seeing if they would be willing to do a Zoom meeting with the Harbor Committee. Um, and I have not heard back from him quite yet. So um, that's where that is. Um, and that's been a long time in, in, you know, I haven't been here that long, but it's been going on for many, many, many years, the talk of uh, some sort of breakwater out there. Um, so that's in the works um, to have them have a discussion with you guys and the town on this. Um, so I'm looking for this one. I think it's 260, but let me let me see. Bayview. George Sherman is his name. I think it's 260 Bayview. But uh, just out past Curtis Island, is that correct? Correct. It is on, on the out. I mean, on the outside of Curtis Island. Yes. Let me find it. It's in the coastal harbor is what it is in. It's not. Um... Yeah, 260 Bayview. Um, I'm not sure I can. Um, yeah, this is all the way out to. Um, Almost to Rockport. Yeah. Um, oh, and as I recall, it's a hundred, hundred plus foot long pier. Um, but they're not, um, don't have anything in the works right now other than they were working on it. They submitted plans. They wanted to go to the Harbor Committee. Steve and I, Steve, the code officer, and I reviewed the plans. There were some um, kind of code issues with what they were proposing on length of the ramp and the float. Um, and since then, I haven't heard from them, but it is 260 Bayview Street. They also own 256 Bayview Street as well. And there are there is a pier um, quite a distance away. I can do that distance right now. Well, 
there the closest pier is about 570 feet away towards Rockport. Jeremy, who's the in, yeah. who's the engineer? Um, well, that's a good question. They were working with a permit um, consultant consulting firm that aren't the engineers. So I think Bartley and Dorsky was working on a little bit, and then they were working with another. I think chemical engineering, maybe I think is what it was. Um, but I was not directly working with the engineering firm. I was working with the permit. Um, they call them permit expediters in my world. Um, that's who I was working with. In terms of process, Jeremy, would we see that application before the planning board does? It's kind of an odd process. Um, it doesn't really spell it out all that clearly, but you know, that's how I would. Um, um, that's how I would like it to go: is that you go to you guys and then to the planning board. It also has to go to the select board for approval as well. Okay. It, it, how, how about the uh, the uh, Lyman Morris um, concept? Um, I mean, I sh probably can't go into a whole lot of detail on that, um, but they are, um, you know, still um, there's a lot that goes into this. So um, they are are working on their their plans and. Um, you know, will be, uh, it'll be coming forward when the time is right. Um, and I, you know, that's uh, Lyman Morris has got a lot of work to do on that. Um, so it's still in the works. It is still in the works for sure. Yeah. Yeah. How about, uh, Josh, Josh, could, could you give us an update on, the, the fire over there and the situation, what's going on? Well, um, sort of like the other projects, um, you know, that one is just sort of, uh, in in process, you know, obviously we did have that fire this summer. Um, quite a quite a significant amount of smoke damage throughout pretty much the whole complex. Unfortunately, there in the in the lower yard, um, we are currently in the process of re renovating, if you will, uh, building one, which is the the big building. Um, and that's I think going to be done here in the next two weeks or so. Um, so that's sort of our first focus because that's, you know, our primary service building, if you will. Um, beyond that, we're still looking at what to do. Um, you know, we, we can't actually occupy those, um, all those lower buildings um, due to the smoke damage did have their uh, certificate of occupancy pulled. So we've temporarily moved um, service uh, offices and things like that up to those mobile trailers that are at the top of the hill. Um, but we're still working through the insurance companies and figuring out honestly what the what the next step is. We we don't we have not set on that. That's for sure. I mean, there was significant. I walked through there. There was significant damage. Uh, I don't know if everyone's. You probably haven't been in there, but it's pretty significant damage. Um, I haven't um, been in there, but I've walked by it. You can certainly smell the damage. Yeah. yeah. The, unfortunately, the, the way those buildings were put together um, over the years created a wind tunnel effect. So, for example, my office, I'm, I am currently working from home, and um, my office is quite a long ways from where the fire actually was. But it's still, uh, if you walk into my office within two or three minutes, you need to take a shower. So <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing the, the, the distance it could travel. I, I am meeting with um, Lyman Morse, um, their engineers and designers on, on what the best options and how to how to proceed um, moving forward. I, if I could, Jeremy, if I could ask you to go back to the Lyman Morse and saying, well, I essentially we'll know when it's time to know. And so I guess what I'd like to know is what what is the process and what parts of the town get involved when I assume that there's select planning board and I assume us and I don't know if it's town approval vote or just what is the process that would be involved? Um, yeah, I kind of think all of the above, Bob, um, honestly. Um, you know, I, certainly there'll be select board approvals needed. There'll be planning board approvals needed. There'll be Harbor Committee approvals needed. Um, likely there will be town, town approval needed. Um, you know, um, so we're still, they're working with their, their attorneys and their consultants on, on trying to do this right. And we're going to, um, 
you know, work with them and, and bring that proposal um, to the town when the time when the time is right. I mean, there's a lot that goes into this. You know, there's a lot of tax implications. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of everything. So um, it's it's a big it's a big project. It's an ambitious project. Um, I think um, you know it's hard because it is a development proposal. It's hard to share a whole heck of a lot with you all right now. Um, these things are confidential until the time is right. And that's why I said it that way, Bob. Um, I, I imagine you can appreciate that. But, you know, being the town meeting form of government that we have, um, these, these kinds of things will go through that process and the select board, planning board, harbor committee and voter approval, um, very likely. Um, so um, I, I think everyone can be assured that there's gonna be plenty of public comment period um, and um, the public will be intimately involved and intimately apprised of what the proposal will be um, and the project will be. So on, whether it's that or on a pier, I should probably look at the ordinance. That would be a surprise. But uh, where does the Harbor Committee actually slot in? I mean, do we just express an opinion and it's uh, maybe more than an individual's opinion, but it's really the planning board and the select board that have actual approval authority of things or where do we slot in? Um, as, and I'm just, I may be um, speaking off the cuff here, but as I understand my reading of it um, and I'm not reading it right this second and I got a lot of ordinances to keep in my brain, um, but that you kind of, for the most part, advise the um, select board and they're the ones who make the decision, they're, they're the ones who um, say yay or nay. Um, on it, but again, there are things here that will will definitely require town town vote, um, not just you know select board um, approval. Um, so it, it will go to town town meeting likely. Yeah. What project is being discussed here? I this think is I think Mark was referring to, um, and what I've been talking about is the. Um, you know, the float systems and dock systems the, that um, Lyman Morse has proposed and they got a DOT grant for, um, that's been talked about for a couple of years, um, a little bit here and there. Um, you know, these things take a long time to put together um, and there's a lot, a lot, of, a lot involved. Um, and, you know, um, we're just not there yet. Um, you know, I wish things could move a little quicker. I'm sure Lyman Morse here too, um, they just, they can't, um, and they're working through their process with their consultants and their lawyers, and and will be, it'll all come to public at some point. I, I couldn't even tell you when that is going to be, Bob. Um, right now, does anyone Probably. know if the if the necessary congressional action was taken? It is. It um, is not. It is not. Uh, they have not voted on the deauthorization bill yet. That is still pending in front of. Did, it did pass out of the Environment and Public Works Committee unanimously. Um, just the Water Resources Development Act of 2020 has not been voted on by um, Congress yet. But it did get unanimous approval out of the Environment and Public Works Committee. I know this is beyond probably your normal purview, but is that bill that has to get voted on that we're a part of got lots of other political things in it that make it uh, an uncertain result or is it really just a I, matter of I, log jams? I, I, I'm going to say it's a matter of log jams. Um, there's a lot in the Water Resources Development Act every every couple of years um, and this is the Army Corps time to you know to bring projects before um, Congress and get approval and if you search those Water Resources Development Act I mean they're there are hundreds, if not thousands, of, of these types of things that are put into the into that full um, water resources development act, um, um, you know, um, proposal or vote or whatever, what you have you. Um, and it's not a political thing right now. This is just a log jam. Um, this is a routine routine thing um, that they do every every couple of years, and, and it's just a log jam right now. Okay. Everybody all set there? Anyone else? Any other questions for me, maybe? No. We can move we, on. 
Um, at what point do we uh, have the applications for, for next year for the wind gym? Or, oh, I guess since we did a three year, since we did a three year, we don't get them, do we? Yeah. So that's, uh, th that'll come up in a moment, Josh. I'll... Okay. I have a letter here that I received this morning from uh, Audra. And uh, I'd just like to go through that with everybody. It starts out, dear members of the Harbor Committee, welcome back. The following items have come to our attention over the summer and we would appreciate your input. So there are five points here. So I'd like to just address, uh, I'll go through one by one. Um, I will, uh, after this meeting, um, I will email you a copy of this letter, each member. Um, Mark? Yes. Just so, just so you know, um, number two, I have a change to number two there was a uh it was a misunderstanding between Andre and i so i if you want for one i can read bullet point number two when you get to it okay uh so first one um town has been fortunate to date that the same number of day sailors as licensees available apply year after year however if there are more day sailors applying for licenses than the seven available what elements should be included in a policy to fairly allocate these licenses? So um, this is something we're gonna have to think about. Now, um, with, that, with that said, we have um, initiated and signed uh, three-year agreements with all the day sailors. So unless, Unless any of those licenses are dropped, um, there are no more slots available for three years. My take on prescribed by the ordinance. Pardon me. That's prescribed by the ordinance. Uh, the ordinance. The ordinance does limit it to seven day sailors. Okay, so I mean, and and this is not something that's uh, that's going to be decided or dealt with today. This is just like I said. I'll email everybody this letter, and these will be agenda points for our next meeting. So, uh, any questions on that point, Steve? You know, if it's an academic discussion or whether there's someone who's actually looking to get a license. I would say it's both. How's that for diplomatic? Yeah, just to be safe, it's both. <laughs> okay, Steve. Uh, uh, number two, number two reads, someone has requested to have a float with a small structure on it uh, to be permitted in the outer harbor. They wanna have this structure to go have lunch have lunch on once in a while. Uh, that needs to be discussed because currently the, the ordinance says that the only way a float can be permitted in the outer harbor is if it adds uh, or increases to the benefit of the township, uh, the municipality. And the reason that was changed approximately six years ago, it used to read that uh, outer harbor floats were not permitted in the outer harbor. But we changed that because the Yacht Club uh, via um, Susan Conover requested that she put a, can put a float out for the small small uh, boats uh, out in way out in the Sherman's Cove just to store their boats for the for the uh, education of uh, sailing schools. So uh, we realized that that was a benefit. The way we could, we could actually do that for her is to change the ordinance to read like that. So um, and Steve, I, I I looked at that and I'm. I looked at it just briefly this morning, so I, I'm not sure how to interpret any of this, but it's on page 24 of the ordinance. If anybody wants to review that at, before our next meeting, but it pertains to mooring floats. And it doesn't say anything about mooring floats on the outer harbor. I haven't, I haven't found that section yet. Um, and what it's, oh, what, wait a minute. 
Camden may permit mooring floats to be moored in the outer harbor only if they support or enhance the use of town owned property. I just found it. Yes, right. I, I, yeah. I actually have that. I have that highlighted because I had to find that after the request that I got from this person. This is one of the one of the Watson families, uh, and they uh, one of their workers came to me and said that uh, that um, you know Danny Watson wants this. They want to have a place to go. And I said to him, the only way that that could possibly happen is if you went back to Danny and said that like the school educational school can use this structure to have like their actual. They they have a an hour or two hour class with the children before they get on the sailboats, teach them about wind direction and all that stuff. If they did something like that and had it so it could be used by that, and then they use it also once in a while for lunch, it's the only way that the, that the harbor committee would look at it because because again it says if it supports or enhances the use of town owned property. So he's going to come back with a letter, uh, and and when I get that letter, hopefully that'll be I'll have that ready for our next meeting we can then discuss whether we want to go you know how that you guys i have a question about what are they talking about having a float that is attached to a mooring and swings around like a boat and it has a little cover or patio or whatever so they can have lunch on it and they're not talking about tying boats up to it except when they go to get on the float correct correct it's gonna have it's gonna have a little structure like a little tiny house, right? Like a cabin of a boat. Jeremy. Yeah, I mean, I think we really need to um, dive into not only the harbor ordinance, but you got to dive into the town zoning ordinance. Um, generally, structures are not allowed on these types of um, floats or or piers or things unless they're functionally water dependent. Um, so, the harbor ordinance may say you can do something like this, but the shoreland zoning ordinance um, may very well prohibit it. So I'm going to dive into that a little bit today. Um, That's a good point because there there would be a difference between a float out there and a structure out there, for sure. So at at this point, we don't actually have any formal application. We just have a verbal communication with you, Steve. Is that right. correct? Correct. Okay. So. I guess we can't really do much. This is just something for us to be thinking of um, coming up. And, you know, one thought, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind with this to me is, is uh, cottages. Yes. Houseboats. <laughs> Houseboats, you know, let's. Well, let, let, gentlemen, let's make sure we realize there's a difference between a houseboat and a float with a house on it. Right. And, and I, Not and really. I, I would say yes, really, because one is a vessel and the other one is not. Well, what I'm talking about is a houseboat like Foy Brown out in North Haven lives on it for, I don't know how many months out of the year. And it's a rectangular float with an actual house and curtains and yep. the whole nine yards. And then you think about the Northwest, you know, or in the Bay Area, there's whole communities of houseboats, which are essentially rectangular floats with residential structures on them. Anasquam River in Massachusetts, full of them. Kittery. Kittery's got some um, non-functionally water dependent um, structures out on floats and piers that have turned into um, sleeping quarters. Um, and that's a violation of their zoning ordinance. And I think they're trying to get their head around it now. Yeah. So. I, yeah. So, okay, there's something for us to all think about. Mm. So, point number three. That's also you, Steve. You've already discussed that a little bit. Yes, uh, the Harbor Master has a uh, plan to increase the amount of dinghy storage at Lake Beach, uh, which we'd like you to review. Now, basically, what I want, I've talked to the people that had their, their boats at Lake Beach. We, I spent some time there during the day. And uh, just to refresh your memory, so you've got Lake Beach, it's a, almost a sandy beach. And then you've got a small granite, kind of like slanted wall. They're dragging their dinghies. It's, only, it's very small. It's maybe like, I don't know, six feet um, as far as, and it's at a slant. So the distance from point A to point B, the sand and the grass, 
about six feet. They've got to drag their little boat up and then tie it to or secure it to a big bottom chain that I put there on the flat piece of grass. Uh, one person said, well, if you could build like a, a almost like a set of steps or, or just a wooden structure with cleats on it, and then on one side where we can walk on that and make it a little safer than walking on the granite, and then maybe put like a fake green turf grass so we can easily slide our boats up and down, that would be a great asset. So I'm thinking about doing something like that um, and then making it so, it's, you know, somehow they get maybe a few more. If it becomes very popular, we'd have to limit how many boats go there. But right now it's working at about, there's about eight boats there and it was about perfect. I bet you could hold up to 15, no problem, 16. So that's all the only reason I wanted to bring to your attention. Okay. Uh, Steve, I'd uh, like to back up to our last point. It says here under on, on page 24 under moorings and floats in paragraph two, the last sentence it says, no buildings or structures shall be permitted on any floats. Yeah, we, I think we added that in 2014. Yeah, we, we, we at time were very aware of the uh, recent trend toward house boats and these floating cottages and whatnot at the time. So that, that's kind of a specific response that, that the committee made to that. At the same time, we were, we were addressing uh, this this issue of the club Flip Sherman Cove. Uh, we, we were aware that on the horizon, someone was going to say that it's, it's not fair. That has a we have a float out there. That's why we connect, connected it to town owned property support or enhancement. Yeah, I guess that pretty much, um, and, and thanks for pointing that out. I, I didn't. Oh, right there, doesn't it? Yeah, that pretty much is the uh, total glass for that one. I don't, I think, there's no way they can get around that, so. Okay, we can take that off the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, the next one. I have been approached by a Harbor Committee member about the town adoption standards for the size and type of boats the town allows transient dockage. Does the Harbor Committee want to provide policy and guidance on allowing, disallowing certain types of sizes of boats, dockage, and or incentivizing certain boats. I, uh, I brought this to Audra's attention. I thought that we should talk about this. Um, and, it, and it has to do a lot about, um, you know, brought to our attention by, by Ron that, um, you know, maybe we should discuss what types of boats, uh, you know, are allowed at the for overnight dock. And although I don't agree with Don, a run on 99% on of what his ideology is, I do believe that, he, that uh, I would love to see more traditional boats at the town docks. So I said to Audra, maybe we should do something like um, put it out there that if you're a, tr a traditionally built wooden vessel, it's half price dockage. Uh, to to it, make an incentive so we get more boats. Because I agree with, with Ron that It'd be great if we could have just historic boats there. It would be better for the town as far as folks coming in and looking at it. It would be a, it'd be like Mystic, you know. Um, unfortunately, I don't have we don't have vessels like that requesting dockage. You know, may, maybe that that could be just resolved in the uh, the uh, fee structure and just do a uh, a uh, historic boat discount. Historic vessel discount. I think it's worth talking about. Yeah. If we could, if we could then make it so more traditional boats realize this, and then they would want to come, realizing that we want them. That won't just that won't change the demand of um, the. I think the biggest to me, I mean, aesthetically, we are altering the appearance of the Inner Harbor in a drastic way of late. And 
it's being determined by a single person. This hasn't come to a vote. This hasn't had any conversation until now or recently. I've had conversations with Audra about it, but um, one person is determining what the inner harbor looks like. And I just don't think that's appropriate. And we have the issue of a uh, municipally funded facility competing with a private or commercial industry. These, so. these are all points that uh, should be discussed. And it's just uh, this meeting here is to uh, just touch base on things and, and we'll delve into it deeply at our next meeting. Um, Can I ask one question? How, how big are the big boats that Steve's talking about being there? I mean, I've seen boats come through Penobscot Bay that are ginormous and they don't even get, fit into the harbor, but how big are the boats that are actually coming up? And, and those are, in my humble opinion, eyesores, but how big are the boats that are actually coming to the inner harbor? Well, I would say that the, the biggest vessel that we can hold is approximately 125 feet, 130 feet. That's the biggest, so pretty big on the back dock, yep. So, you know, another concept would be to, to take that back dock and use, say, the first half of that back dock as a dinghy dock. That would help sort out our dinghy issue. Yeah. And, and then it would also limit the size of vessels that are on that back dock. We can limit the size of vessels on that back dock just by policy. It doesn't require an ordinance. It's, it's just the, 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 the personality, the aesthetic of the inner harbor is being dictated by a single person. That's my biggest complaint. It's not appropriate. Well, it should, be, it should be up for discussion. We need to, I'll say it again, decide what we want it to look like. And there's been vessels in there that are 120 feet long and they block the view from the park. You can no longer see the harbor. And likewise, the view from the Yacht Club, you can't see the park. Ron, I, I, it, I think it might be just a little bit unfair to say it's dictated by one individual. This is a society issue. And boats are exactly. bigger, yachts That's are bigger. Be. It's happening in every harbor. Well, I think we should have the conversation about the substance and not worry about who has been deciding or not deciding in the past. I think it's a legitimate issue that the Harbor Committee should weigh in on. Yes. Yeah, I, I would agree on that. And I guess for the next meeting, Steve, if you could bring whatever, if, if there are any restrictions on um, size of vessels, um, I don't know if we could, well, you could, you could try for the um, style of vessel, but I think size is going to be the one thing that we might be able to um, regulate. So if you could bring any, any current restrictions uh, for any of the town owned facilities, you know, um, there's the back, obviously the back, the back side of the dock where you can put the, the biggest boats, but also the slips. What, you know, if you have a 70 footer, 70 footers fit in one of those slips, I don't really think so. Um, uh, so just whatever current regulations we have for that would be great to have for the next conversation. Sure. sure. Yeah, that's easy enough to do. Uh, I, th I think it'd be interesting to see data on lengths of boats that are have docked. Hmm. Historically, this year, last year. Is that doable, Steve? Uh, you know, that all depends if, because I don't save the actual you know, all, all the paperwork showing the dockage. Um, I could go back with Jody, the finance director, and do it that way. You got, you got, well, I, uh, I think, I mean, that sounds like an awful lot of work. I mean, I think we all understand what the issue is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great conversation and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm hey, serious. Hey, uh, last one, Steve, you've already discussed uh, about speeding in the harbor. Yeah, it's always, it's, it's a pet peeve of mine. And um, 
not only like this year in, inside, when I approach someone who has, I've caught speeding, I have to really quell a desire to jump up and, and, and uh, really get down that person's, in that person's face. Instead, I approach it with as much kindness as I can. And I calmly tell them that this is a federal navigable waterway and it's headway speed only. And if you don't know what headway speed is, look it up. And, and then I say, have a good day. And I leave. Now, not only, not only have I had a problem with that, but now it um, um, looks like Elliot said that he had a letter from somebody that also said, you know, one or two people said, gee, I noticed people are getting faster. That's all I need for me to get my deputies, you know, actually sitting there kind of hanging out unnoticed and so and to catch people speeding just to really put it out there that so it's very possible that we just need to spend a little bit more money on more on bigger buoys that say and i have two big five mile per hour buoys maybe i should have like another set of four as they come down that and when you get into the inner harbor um this is a segue to another idea i had i want to possibly talk about putting one more inner harbor float uh out there and it would be town owned and I could, I, my, my, my deputy in my office could, on calm days, because it won't be a good float if in rough weather. We all know that. It'd be the furthest one out there. It'd be with the two, in the middle of where the two east and west channels converge. But if, if positioned correctly, it'd be perfect to have a big sign that says, Welcome to Camden Harbor. Harbor Master can be found on 16, uh, Camden Yacht Club on 68, and um, Lyman Morris on 71, and, you know, Pump outs are free and, you know, have a big signage and also saying, you know, five mile per hour only. Um, I think signage is, is one of our problems. Josh? Um, Steve, are the, the boats that are speeding, do you have any sense or data about who they are? Are they local boats? Are they tenders? Are they people visiting from North Haven? Yeah, look, once again, once again, everybody is speeding. Everybody's everybody's going everybody's going too fast. Everyone for some reason is in a big hurry. They're not con content with where they are. They want to get somewhere else. <laughs> well, ironically, my biggest problem in a traditional rowboat is the yacht club big fat launch, which may be going five miles an hour. I don't know, but it makes the biggest wake, and uh, it makes me go rock back and forth, make sure I don't try to go from boat to boat, etc. So it's not. I mean, there's the speed because you can, it could be like the parking lot down at Staples where you think, oh, I can cut across these lanes and then someone's coming from left field and whack. Uh, and you could have people coming around a boat. But when most of those, uh, you know, Avons or whatever are whipping along like that, they don't really make much wake. It's, it's a matter of uh, avoiding yes. each other. Robert, good point. Thank you. Good point. Um, and again, it's been, a, it's been a, something that I've had to deal with for the 19 years I've been here. This, this summer, for some reason, um, it's, been, it's been harder than usual. My, I've actually put deputies out and say, you know, it's the first time ever. I've had to put Jim out there, and he loves to do it. But he was happy to do it. But it's, it's more time to, to pay someone to just literally sit out there, and all he's doing is putting his lights on, going over and saying, please slow down. Please slow down. And, and I'm okay to do that. But I just wanted to bring it up that that's an issue. And we might have to spend some money on new signage and really get it out there. The people that really decide how fast um, the, uh, the acceptable limit is are the two launch drivers, are the fishermen going in and out, and same with the day sailors. And I've written them all letters saying, look, guys, you're the ones who, who tell the rest of the public. They're looking to you to say, how fast can I go? Because I want to go fast. I want to get to my boat and get my cocktail in me or whatever, whatever they're doing. So they're looking to see, how fast can I go? All the day sailors, all of them, go too fast. They, uh, they can slow down. And we're going we're gonna to get there. It's going to happen. Well, I just saw a very handsome sailboat sailing in, in through the harbor at a, at a high rate of speed. Oh, that was you, Ron. <laughs> there you go. Ron, just because you have the prettiest boat, just because you have the prettiest boat in the harbor doesn't say you can speed. 
I'll, I'll, I'll throw it out too. Another thing that seems to be going, you know, I may have got my my morning permit to see he had or whatever, but but uh, there's a huge increase in use in the channel at Curtis Island, going back back and forth there. And, and the talk about speed, that's that the, the, they think that's that, that seems to be a, a, a free for all zone in terms of the speed. So you might, might consider putting a, a file an hour buoy through through there. Because it was it havoc throughout the the, uh, the mooring fleet, the mooring fleet. Okay, yeah, I'll look into that. Um, again, I tell folks that once you get out of the mooring fields, and you're obviously if you're you're in the outer harbor, you get out to the coastal harbor. That's your way because you're still your responsibility. But I'm not going to tell you once you get past Curtis Island how fast you can go. That's up to the prudent mariner. Oh, past Curtis Island, yeah, but still in that channel or on the approaches from the outer har harbor through it, it's free for all. Yeah, you're talking about Mary's Ledge, Red right Land area. Yeah, or even even before closer into into the in the uh, in bar, off Lake Beach, off Lake Beach. There's 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 all kinds of stuff going on in there. Oh, are are you talking about uh, coming in the other side of Curtis Island between the? Yeah, yeah, the little panel there. Yeah, yeah. That's Mary's Ledge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah well, lots of traffic and like a lot of very high speed tra uh, traffic. Again, I I can get two buoys and put them out to say five mile per hour to tell people. It's, that's what I can do for next spring. That sure sounds like the first step. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm we're not sure if the comment about which side of Curtis Island, Island we're talking about. If we're looking from the launching <laughs> ramp. To Curtis Island, are we talking about to the right of the island or the left of the island? But look, I think we're talking. I think Sandy's talking about between the island and Lake Beach. Off Lake oh, Beach. Okay. Okay. Off Lake Beach. Yeah, to the right hand side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, does that need to be a discussion for next meeting? Next meeting? Yeah. Yes. Or I think so. And I think you guys at that next meeting should advise me uh, to spend some money on new signage and talk about, you know, how we're going to do that. Yeah, I don't think we need a billboard at the entrance to the harbor that has a whole bunch of it available online. Oh, I mean, they ought to be tasteful, discreet. Yeah. If the comment uh, about well, I don't know if it was in jest or serious, but you know, speed under sale. Okay, yeah. No, well, that was probably that probably was guilty as charged. <laughs> Obviously, the conversation isn't about isn't just about speed. It's about the wake that's being left behind. Yes. Maintaining steerage way. If that's the requirement, there are certain boats that are doing seven knots when you clutch them in. Yeah. yeah, the conversation is isn't just about speed. We all know about who's violating. The other thing is that a lot of boats leave less weight when they're doing week, twenty than week. they do when they're doing five. I don't. I don't think any of my boats are going fast to the harbor, are they, Steve? Because I've talked about that a few times at meetings in the morning. I have been reading your letters. I think all of the day sail, all of the day sailors uh, go through the outer channel too fast. Okay. I mean, I, I don't think any of them are going over five knots, but um, I, I know, I know that they are. Okay. I know that my, they are. My, okay. All, all of them. All of the day sailors. Okay. I'm going to jump in again here. It's in fairness, the day sailors are on a really stringent schedule. They've got their five 15 minute slot at the dock and uh, a little miscalculation on their part on the, while they're out sailing can put them a little behind. So uh, as long as they're not leaving, if they have control and they're not leaving awake, uh, I'm not sure that's a, that it's really an issue. I think that'd be part, I think that'd be part of the discussion, be part of the discussion when we have our meeting. Yes. Okay. Is there anything else that anybody would like to add to the agenda for next meeting? Um, yeah, so I got an item uh, back uh, back uh, early this year. We had the wood report 
and that was uh, focused on sea level rise and flooding. And it's my recollection that report was uh, done for approximately 10 municipalities. Um, I'm wondering in a general way how the town of Camden uh, considers that issue and, and if it's believed that it's necessary to take some action. That's a big deal. It's a big, very, very big deal. Um, so I'm just kind of curious if there's going to be any follow up on the issues that were presented in that report. Well, I know that I, I've been talking with Allison McKellar. She's come to my office three times and we're trying to formulate um, how the, her, me and Audra are going to get together and take that information from that report and then try to give a synopsis to the select board to get that ball rolling what we're going to, and Jeremy was in on this too, you know, what we're going to feel is appropriate, uh, good meat to uh, bring to, to the meal uh, so we can then discuss what our, our, how we're going to go forward to uh, when we redo the, uh, the harbor. Because we've got a big redesign coming in the next five years. I was thinking about that the other day, Steve, and, and, and you know, over at the park where that was, um, you know, we seem to be waiting for big dollars to rebuild that whole wall. And it seems to me that would, if, if we just did a, 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 put a, another row of granite on top of that wall just to help protect that instead of allowing it to continue to erode until we do rebuild the whole thing. Um, is uh, you got any thoughts on that? I mean, does that make well, sense? I, I, obviously, if we're going to have to regrade the entire parking lot on the, on the other side and do the same thing, put up another row of granite, pin it down, and then put a new wharf on top of it, yeah, you know, and then, and then and actually regrade the actual parking lot or part of it to match that. Then, well, yeah. I'm talking about on the other side of the waterfalls, you know, if we just if we start by protecting that area first, instead of looking at it as a big um, project, you know, let's take it one step at a time, one area at a time. I, I think a good role for the harbor, for the harbor committee would be to, to be able to succinctly, succinctly say to the, to the select board, here's, what we, here's, a, here's our idea. Here's what you should do. Why don't you think about this? To give them some ideas. Because I think it's a, such a big project that they're, they're stumbling on the fact that it's so grand. They don't know where to start. That, that, I was assessing it the same way. But if you just started at the park, just, just simple. I mean, the town ought to be able to do that fairly inexpensively. Put a row of, put a row of uh, granite on top of what's already there and uh, backfill it. Yeah, get some fill, plant some new grass, maybe something that can root up. I think, once again, if we could have a one, two, three point system of here's what you, we think you should do. And we could also um, try to encourage more simple meetings where we can meet with the, the downtown planning and this group and that group, because they're all talking about the same thing, about the revitalization and the rebuilding of, of, the, of the harbor. Okay, so we'll discuss that. What are we, what are we gonna label that? Uh, well, I would say discussion on, on, harbor, on, on harbor and Harbor Park you know, rebuild. Because then you'll get one of the select board members, especially Allison McKellar, who want to go to that meeting. And she can give us a quick update, uh, or not so quick, on where they are with that. You know, where, where, where exactly where they are. What's holding them up, what dates they're looking at, Maybe they're looking for uh, that exact, um, you know, oceanic uh, review to be finished, so then they can make a move. I don't know what it is, but I've actually twice tried to get her and Andre to say, "Hey, I can't do much more to this wharf. You guys walk down on that wharf. It looks like a roller coaster. I mean, it's time to rebuild it. So I want to try to push this to, to get happening." Yeah, well, I mean, this, I think that part of the stumbling block with that report is 
I mean, what was their estimate for a harbor master office? It was like Jim. Several. I went through. I went through that report, and I made changes, and I said, "Here's what I agree with. Here's what I don't agree with." One of the things I didn't agree with was what that would cost. They had different cost things, and I'm like, "This is ridiculous. This is this is right. I like this." And I and I brought that to Allison, and I said, "Let's let's move forward now." I don't think focusing on the dollars in that report is what's important. That's the issue. And, you know, they had their own numbers and who knows where they came from. But I, I think the issues they present uh, are what's significant. Yeah, I agree. And I agree. And I, and I pretty much highlighted the issues and where I think how that can help us guide us as a municipality on getting together, making some decisions, put some common sense to it and hope they get a grant because it's not going to be cheap. And um, so that's why you've got, you've got multi-level. We're looking for a grant and, and uh, Allison's pretty good at that. So it'd be good if you put a, uh, Mr. Chairperson on the agenda, if you put down the, a discussion on, on, on harbor, um, you know, renewal and revitalization. Okay, John there. Right, and I, I think another thing about that report, I mean, yes, I mean, it, it certainly reported some negatives and some issues that need to be addressed, but it also said that our harbor's in pretty good shape compared to others. I mean, I you know, we've got to look at the positive side too. Yeah, yeah. When I look at, we're not doing so bad. Right. Okay. So, uh, any other any other items we want to add to the agenda, or this isn't an agenda item necessarily. I'd just like to comment. Uh, in the Camden Herald last week, there was a story about the yacht club and uh, the uh, discussion at the select board meeting. In that article. Uh, there was described that uh, Allison McKellar uh, uh, mentioned the town charter rule that the board is not allowed to enter into agreements longer than a year. And I recalled that we had uh, spent a lot of time working on three year terms for our commercial passenger vessels. And I wondered if there's a conflict there. Does anyone know about this town charter rule? Yeah, the way the way we looked at that for the three year agreement for the vessels is it's reviewable each year. So, um, you know, that's what we did. And, and if it doesn't, if they're not meeting the standards and we can terminate the agreement. So that's, that's how we looked at that three year period. However, the yacht club, I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a whole nother issue. You know, they need a uh, 20 year notice for non-renewal of the lease. That's a, that's a good deal. Yeah, that's a long party. party. To be something that the board is at the time and agreed on after months and months of negotiation and, and into debate and I, I think you gotta look at the good side of what goes on there you can't just plus you gotta you gotta yeah don't get me got me going but. yeah <laughs> i think we might want to look at that three-year thing when the topic of discussion about what do we do if the someone else is applying for a license, depending how much I uh, challenge they're ready to put up. I, I think that the three year thing, I don't know if the town attorneys really looked at it, I, but in theory, the same argument could be made about the Yacht Club or anything else that you have a 20 year term and every year you can theoretically look at it to see if they're not living up to it, but they have a, right to keep going 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 and i'm not quite sure how that makes it a one-year term
Well, I could care less. Whatever you guys think, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care on the policy. I'm just saying, that, think that if that's becoming a hot issue because of the uh, yacht club, uh, you can expect a lot of people to pick up on that question. Yeah, I don't see it becoming a hot issue because of the yacht club. I mean, I, I, I think there are two completely different issues and, you know, the yacht club is, you know, like Sandy's kind of referred to, I mean, that's a community involvement thing. And also a license is not necessarily an agreement to use town property is one thing. Uh, a license is not really using town property. Well, I guess it is actually because it's coming to the dock. That's what it's all about. Yep. That's uh, the end for me. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, just, just to back up, I mean, that, that has been reviewed by the town attorneys and the select board and, and the three-year term was discussed um, and approved. So, and it, and it's something that all the boats wanted. So, okay. Um, if there's nothing else, ready to adjourn the meeting? Yep. Yeah, it was good. It was a good meeting. It was good to get to get, to get back. I mean, um, I, I get to see a lot of different people, a lot of residents, a lot of visitors, and I get to safely talk with a lot of people about, you know, their feeling about where we are socially, you know, with this pandemic and where it's going. And uh, so far, I think we're doing really good as a township and as a, and as a harbor. And uh, I, I hope, uh, hope you got, you guys stay safe till our next meeting. And uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for, thanks for the input. And, and next meeting is Tuesday the 6th at what time? 830. Uh, I, uh, I'm pretty sure it's 8.30. I'd have yeah, to. I can revisit the email from Janice. Yeah, I mean, we've got the Zoom invites, I think, for that meeting. Yeah, already. it's 8.30. Yeah. See you then. Okay. Right, See you All right. Right. Thanks, have everybody. Good day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>